So today we're going to be talking about Netflix's unique CDN design and how they use it to meet the streaming demands of hundreds of millions of users. So if you're not familiar, a CDN, or content delivery network, is a system that can be used to cache downloads of large content such as videos in geographic locations that are closer to the users physically. Deploying a CDN is critical to the success of Netflix, because with so many users streaming such large amounts of data, it would be impossible for Netflix's data center to be able to handle all of that traffic. Just like any normal CDN, Netflix's CDN employs a number of nodes that are geographically distributed in various points of presence around the globe. Each one of these nodes can then cache data that's frequently accessed by their users, and any user that needs access to this data can then connect to whichever point of presence is closest to them and can deliver the content to them optimally. This is a major improvement over having to have every single request be routed through the internet all the way to Netflix's data center. However, unlike a lot of traditional CDNs, Netflix's CDN is a lot more open than many others, but in order to see why that's the case, we need to discuss the architecture of the internet itself. So the internet consists of a number of distinct internet service providers. These internet service providers are responsible for laying down the physical infrastructure that connects different users to each other and building the infrastructure that allows users to purchase bandwidth on that network. Verizon and Comcast are common consumer-facing internet service providers that you may have heard of. There's also internet service providers that live solely to connect other internet service providers. There may not be any households and users connected directly to this infrastructure, but these higher level ISPs might be really important in connecting different locations across the globe. In order to create the internet as we know it today, these internet service providers have to be connected to each other in some way. They do this by peering with each other at what we call internet exchange points. We can think of the internet exchange points as the places where these ISPs overlap, and different internet service providers can agree to allow traffic to flow between them through these internet exchange points. So let's consider a scenario where we have three ISPs, ISPs A, B, and C. We have some users connected to any of them. However, Netflix's data center is connected within ISP C. So our user in ISP A here is going to have to connect through their ISP, peer to another ISP at this internet exchange point, connect all the way through ISP B, peer at another internet exchange point, and then finally go through ISP C to finally get to Netflix's data center. This is a long journey for the internet traffic and would likely introduce a lot of latency and slow speeds if every single user had to do this. Furthermore, ISP A and ISP C could even be on different continents, and there would have to be some intercontinental fiber optic cables connecting these internet service providers, and that would introduce additional latency to this process. In order to rectify this problem, just like many other CDNs, Netflix has employed points of presence at internet exchange points. What this means is that Netflix deploys servers at these internet exchange points right in between the different ISPs that are peering at that internet exchange point. Because these IXPs are the places where multiple internet service providers come together, they make a really effective location for optimizing the number of internet service providers that can access a specific piece of hardware that's deployed there. Netflix refers to the hardware that they deploy as Open Connect Appliances, or OCAs. These OCAs store a cached copy of all of the movies and TV shows that are sitting on Netflix's data center, and they they allow the really frequently accessed content to be accessed much more quickly by end users. So for example, this user over here, instead of having to traverse the entire internet to get to Netflix's data center, can simply go directly to this Open Connect appliance that's sitting on their internet service provider. The majority of Netflix traffic is going to be cached on these Open Connect appliances, which will significantly decrease the load on Netflix's data center and on the internet infrastructure as a whole. Now something that Netflix has noticed through this process is that having these Open Connect appliances deployed deployed effectively is also extremely beneficial for the internet service providers themselves, not just for Netflix. By deploying these appliances, internet service providers can significantly reduce the bandwidth that's going across their network, and if they place these Open Connect appliances in strategic locations, they can really effectively optimize network traffic throughout their network because Netflix traffic makes up such a significant part of the internet. So in order to take advantage of this symbiotic relationship, Netflix is allowing internet service providers to deploy Open Connect appliances anywhere on their network to further optimize traffic. So in this example, we can see that in addition to the appliance deployed at this internet exchange point, we also have an open connect appliance deployed right on the edge of this internet service provider, really, really close to this end user. So now our Netflix traffic from this user doesn't even have to traverse across this internet service provider. It just has to jump right to this open connect appliance that's very close to it geographically. So now with so many nodes deployed across so many geographic locations, it's really important for Netflix to optimize the cost of 
infrastructure at these locations. To make sure that they're doing this, Netflix has three different tiers of OpenConnect appliances that they deploy. They have the standard storage tier, and this is the standard storage node that's used for delivering content to end users. In certain high traffic areas, they can also use the flash tier, which uses SSD storage, which is more expensive, but much faster. And this can be used for caching some of the really, really frequently accessed data that requires a faster storage medium. And finally, there's the global tier, which uses cheaper hardware and is more suitable for regions with less developed internet infrastructure. This tier can reduce the cost of deploying OpenConnect appliances while still optimizing network traffic using this architecture. All right, so now let's dive into how the OpenConnect architecture actually works and how all of these nodes can communicate with each other to effectively build an optimal network. So the first thing that we have to think about is how the data is actually going to get into these OpenConnect appliances. We have our Netflix data center, which is sort of the source of truth for all content. The first place that this content is going to get replicated to is the internet exchange points. So whenever new content is released or updated, or the viewing patterns of that content changes, Netflix can push updates to any of these OpenConnect appliances that are deployed in these internet exchange points. This is done on a nightly basis and is done during off-peak times to make sure that this download process doesn't interfere with actual Netflix traffic. Next up, if we have OpenConnect appliances deployed directly on the internet service providers, these appliances can pull new data from the internet exchange points. This is going to require a lot less bandwidth than going directly to Netflix because the traffic won't have to traverse across internet service providers, assuming that this internet service provider is also peering with Netflix at the internet exchange point. And then finally, of course, we have our users that can access the content stored on these OpenConnect appliances. Now, in order to collect data about how the content is being used, the network conditions of different locations, and what data should be stored on which node, Netflix has developed this cache control service, which all of the OpenConnect appliances will report to with various telemetry and usage statistics. This cache control service is deployed on AWS and must be globally available so that all of these appliances can access it. Using this data can help Netflix's users determine which node they should go to for the data that they're looking for. So whenever a Netflix client tries to play a movie or TV show, they're first going to reach out to a service called Coda, which will use the telemetry data that the cache control service receives from these OpenConnect appliances and will return back to these clients a URL that they can use to access the correct OpenConnect appliance. This will be based on things like the user's geographic location and which node is closest to it, the network conditions of these various locations, and also just the content that's actually stored on these nodes, since not every node will have all of the content available on Netflix. When a user wants to play back content, they can use the URL they receive from Coda directly to make sure that they're getting content from the right place. So that explains the bulk of how Netflix's OpenConnect architecture actually works. By making this architecture really, really open and available to internet service providers, Netflix is able to really effectively scale their infrastructure by collaborating with internet service providers to optimize network traffic across the internet. As a consequence of this system being so open, this also makes it extremely easy for you to research. So if you're curious to learn more about this topic, you can check out Netflix's website on OpenConnect, which has a ton of really detailed information on how the system is architected, how it works, and even how to integrate with the system if you're an internet service provider. And finally, if you want to learn more about CDNs in general, you should be sure to check out our full video about content delivery networks as part of our Systems Fundamentals course on interviewpen.com. If you enjoyed this video, you can find more content like this on interviewpen.com. We have tons of more in-depth system design and data structures and algorithms content for any skill level, along with a full coding environment and an AI teaching assistant. You can also join our Discord, where we're always available to answer any questions you might have. If you or a friend wants to master the fundamentals of software engineering, check us out at interviewpen.com.